So today we're going to discuss the question why do moving charges produce a magnetic field? This question is very common among JE students or any competitive exam whether it be KVPY, NEET or any other competitive exam or maybe you're just curious about this. Uh, so you're told that uh, when a charge is stationary it doesn't really have any magnetic effects uh, around its surrounding but when it starts moving it has a magnetic field produced somehow. But you're never really given a proper explanation by it. You might be given some reason, but I don't expect anyone to give you a proper explanation or an exhaustive ex explanation why this exactly happens. And it's not uh, your teacher's fault or anything. This subject is a very advanced subject. So I'll just uh, get into it. So coming to the question, what exactly is magnetism in reference with this question? As you can see here, electromagnetism is nothing but electrostatics plus special theory of relativity. Now, <laughs> don't get tempted or don't get uh, scared. There might be two effects to it by seeing relativity here. But uh, uh, electromagnetism is basically relativistic effect of electrostatics. Uh, when you have a charge stationary, it's being applied by uh, or it's governed by the laws of electrostatics only. But when it starts moving, there are some relativistic effects that uh, start to apply or that go on it. So it's like a relativistic electrostatic combination or something. You get the point. <laughs> so <laughs> the shit. Special theory of relativity. Uh, now this, uh, I have mentioned this here, only required concepts because I won't be covering sp oh, all of special theory of relativity it's a really huge topic and I'm not qualified at all to teach it or even properly understand it myself but uh, the one of the topics that special theory of relativity covers is length contraction now what exactly is length contraction as you can see here when some object uh, when some moving object is being observed from an initial uh, inertial frame of reference its measured length is le uh, less than the proper length. Now proper length here signifies the length of the object from the object's frame of reference. Now it's proper length. Length of the object when the object is actu uh, actually stationary. I'll explain it a bit more here. Imagine you're standing here. Amazing drawing but yeah. So uh, imagine a car is moving past by, sorry, uh, moving by and it's actually accelerating. Now, the length that you measure uh, while you're stationary here, okay, you're fixed. The length that you measure, uh, say that's L, but uh, and the car is accelerating. When the car stops, uh, now the car has come to a stop. Uh, so now the length, uh, now you measure its stationary length, say that's L0. What length contraction tells you is that L is actually smaller than L0 when something is moving and the length that you measure it's actually shrunk now this effect is not easily observable at uh, your classical level your newtonian level because uh, you don't uh, you don't interact with uh, speed that high which are required for observable length contraction but even if this is a realistic example example the length would reduce by say 0.0000001% maybe I'm just pulling up numbers here, but uh, just to give you an idea, just to give you an idea, uh, this effect is very minute on real, uh, on classical level or Newtonian level. Okay, so L is smaller than L naught. That's what we understand from length contraction and the special theory of relativity. Now I've given this formula here, but you but you really don't need it. Uh, I've just given it for reference, uh, just in case someone's interested to know how they calculate these. You shouldn't really get into these formulas, it's not required at all. But uh, I've still provided for someone's curiosity. This gamma here represents the Lorentz factor. Uh, if you want to read about it, you obviously can, although it's a really advanced topic. Now coming on to the next side, okay, so this example, this example is really good. I'll try to explain it over here. Now what this is saying is, imagine you you have a earth, obviously, and you have a rocket that's accelerating towards another planet. Now first you're 
standing on earth stationary you are observing the rocket go by what happens is since it's accelerating away from you you the the length contraction theorem applies here and you see the rocket a, bri uh, a bit shrunk the length is reduced it's like this if we try to compare the length you see the length has shrunk uh, now imagine if you're standing on the rocket so you're standing on the rocket now what happens here is for you from your frame of reference the the rocket is actually stationary uh, and the earth is going away you know when you're in a train and you're sitting in a train you see a tree nearby and you s and it feels like the tree is going that way instead of the train moving you think the train is stationary but the tree is going by that that applies here and uh, this you see that this uh, you think that the rocket is actually stationary while the earth is going this way and since the earth is uh, accelerating in a opposite direction for you when you're on the uh, rocket the length starts to contract of earth uh, earth's length or it 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 feels a bit shrunk uh, length contraction applies so you would see something like this a bit shrunk while the actual length or actual size is like this just to give you an idea uh, so uh, I've, li I've given a link of this example and the, at the last slide you can always check it out and read the article now coming on to our main topic about wires and charges uh, so now imagine if you have a wire uh, like uh, this and you have a test charge over here some positive charge and the wire is not connected to anything so no, none of the charges are actually moving so you have some positive charges and you have equally negative charges if you touch a neutral wire it doesn't attract anything or it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't shock you that means that the in a cross section there are equal number of protons and equal number of neutrons uh, sorry equal number of protons and equal number of electrons uh, there's a neutrality in the wire so if I put a positive charge over here it won't experience anything like there would be a net uh, force of zero since in a cross section uh, there is neutrality but if I start to move the charge and uh, produce a current in this wire now now relativity applies here okay so what happens is from the charges frame of reference uh, the electrons are almost moving along with the charge so it it feels as though the electrons are actually stationary okay and uh, along with the charge and it's the positive charge this uh, these protons that's moving backwards uh, from the from Q's frame of reference since Q would see them moving backwards they would they would seem like they have shrunk length contract uh, according to length contraction so it would seem like they have condensed a bit they have shrunk down and since they have shrunk down in a particular cross section there would be more positive charge as compared to negative charge which means neutrality is no longer applied suddenly when the charge starts to move which is interesting uh, now what happens is since the net charge is not zero this uh, Q here it was a positive Q it would feel a repulsion force but we don't really have any external agent why is it feeling this force we don't know why is why it's feeling this force so we call it magnetism it's a magnetic effect even if you take the original wire to have a current initially uh, say it had a current and the electrons are moving and but the charge our or original test charge is stationary it won't have any effect on the on this the electrons would be moving they would be passing by at the same rate so in a particular cross section at some particular time 
there would be equal number of protons and electrons so neutrality still applies there but when the when our charge when our test charge starts to move suddenly it feels a repulsion because uh, for for the test charge electrons are moving along with it almost uh, but the positive charge are moving away from it which means there would be length contraction which means there would be a repulsion uh, a repulsion or a repulsion uh, repulsive force sorry repulsive force which we just term as magnetic force this is the reason why we say that moving charges produce magnetic fields it's not exactly a magnetic field or a proper uh, usual sense magnetic field it's a magnetic effect or a relativistic effect of electromagnetism uh, electro electrostatics which gives the effect of uh, magnetism here you can see uh, protons are more condensed from q's frame of reference in a particular frame of reference the net charge seems positive so q gets a net repulsive force now to relate this relate this to the formula you have learned f equals q v b in whole of electrostatics you won't find any of electrostatic force a force uh, dependent on electric effects which is proportional to velocity in any way either inversely or directly or by any means electrostatic force don't depend on uh, velocity but here when you learn uh, about uh, magnetism you see that velocity term comes up this is the reason why velocity term is applied here now we we discussed this now why does the charge q gets repelled when it's moving but not when it's stationary it's because of the relativistic effect the charge uh, it's a relativistic effect of length contraction of moving charge the positive charges seem more condensed so there is a net positive charge so i have given these references uh, this is that example which i provided here and uh, this is the youtube video of veritasium about special relativity and magnetism and how they mix well together you should really check this out and i guess uh, you now have a better understanding of why moving charges produce a magnetic field see you won't be able to apply this idea everywhere in every sense because this is a really simplified explanation for you you won't be able to understand uh, every phenomena through this explanation because it's a really exhaustive topic uh, i have tried to given you a basic information just to get you hang of what's happening and why why this is not completely useless and random i have tried to explain to you in a in a very simplified way uh but uh, you have to understand this is uh, that this is a really advanced topic and you learn this in if you pursue a physics major so i hope that you get the basics of it